one to the City Infrastructure Committee on the, of the 31st of the 8th, 2022. Um, apologies, we have one. Councillor Fox is an apology. We have no one to co-opt. And there's four of us here. Okay, well, four of us on the committee, we are. Okay, item two, uh, confirmation of minutes. Yep, thanks. Alderman Barakas, everyone read the minutes? We all agree they're reasonable Reasonable representation, what happened? Mm -hmm. All right. Item three, supplementary items. We don't have any. Item four, consideration, or oh, indication of pecuniary and conflicts of interest. Anyone? No. Transfer of items, not enough to transfer. Item six is reports. 6.1, Hobart Active Travel Committee meeting minutes. Is that they be received and noted, uh, Chair? All right, thank you, Deputy. Any comments about the, the minutes? Any questions? I said that I was there for some of the meeting, at least, rather than a total apology, but that's OK. <laughs> well, I, no, I think I chaired, yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. You chaired, yeah. I chaired, so I can guarantee that everything's accurate. Any comments? No comments? No? Going once? No? OK. All right. I'll put that. Shall we clear that carried? Yep, let's do that. OK, carried. Unanimously. Item 6.2, the bus shoulder update. This is exciting. Mm. Any comments? Can we have a little overview? Sure. Um, so as people would be aware, this is a good opportunity, I hope, to kill two birds with one stone. Um, we conducted our um, bus shelter competition um, during COVID. We had a winning design by the company Super Manoeuvre. People <coughs> may remember we won a Planning Institute Award for that bus shelter design. Um, and uh, our next step was to develop a proof of concept model for the shelter. Um, we also had a representation around replacing the bus shelter um, bus stop 11 at Sandy Bay Road. Um, so we brought those two projects together. Um, we've been negotiating with West Point around access to the most appropriate site that we can uh, for DDA access, so that's there's been a number of conversations had with Rest Point, but they're now in agreement um, that we can locate that bus shelter in our desired location. It will require um, the relocation of some Princess Mary roses in the rose garden, but we're working on a way that we can incorporate the bus shelter into the reformed rose garden, and hopefully everyone's happy. Um, so I don't have a delivery date at this stage for the bus shelter because um, our consultant Super Manoeuvre are working with some of the technical detail around the site. Um, but it's really, I guess, just to give the committee an update that we are progressing that project as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and we would intend to uh, make this a reasonably large event um, mm -hmm. when it's ready. Uh, to launch for a couple of reasons, but uh, I guess the most important one being that state government have recently announced $10.5 million to support installation of DDA compliant bus shelters, and that is one of the objectives of our bus shelter design. So Robert and I have been talking with officers at State Growth around how we might work with them to look at some priority bus stops and potentially rolling out our project. Um, there's likely to be a co-funding requirement on that, um, but we don't have enough detail yet on what that looks like. Wow, okay, very exciting. Mm. Deputy? Uh, through you, Chair, yes, um, thank you for that update, and I think it's yeah, very exciting, but uh, can you just remind me what it's gonna be um, made out of, and do we need planning approval for bus stop, presumably? Um, and is the, would there be any heritage um, um, implications? We don't believe yet. Um, so the construction of the bus shelter is eucalyptus nittens. So it's a, um, a formed timber product. Uh, and the beauty of the design is that it's modular. So um, whilst we'll be developing the proof of concept, we'll also be looking at ways that we can um, potentially roll out um, multiple builds of the component parts. They're also quite easy to replace in terms of a kind of computer laser cutting process if we need to. So it's it's um, quite durable in terms of the finish that's put on the timber, but it's also a very sustainable and replaceable um, uh, material. 
Um, as for a development application, I honestly can't remember if mm. we've got that in the project plan. Yeah. I would have thought no. P possibly not, but uh, I need to confirm that, but uh, we'll avoid it if we can. If we mm. can't, then we'll check. Where yeah. is on the visual um, display? Yes, so that's still got to be worked mm. through. Yeah. 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 The visual display. <coughs> so part of the component is a digital oh. display. So I think it depends on, on that in particular as to whether yeah. or not it's visible externally or whether you're seated when you view it. I think yeah. that's the key thing. Um, uh, hang on. Okay. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of questions. And one of them was just touched on. Um, how and maybe the, like the modularity is a factor, but how how robust and durable are these going to be? Because it looks really good, mm. but is it going to be one of those things where as soon as um, you know, yeah, people aren't behaving in good faith, you know, yeah. start damaging it, and you know, I'm, I'm particularly worried about the the screens. Okay, so I can talk Please. to that. Yeah. Um, there's, I guess there's two theories at play here. Um, one of them is that. Um, Generally speaking, the experience is that something designed and attractive um, is less likely to attract tagging and vandalism, but if it does, um, the, um, the timber is surfaced with something that will make it reasonably easy for cleaning off tagging, but it's also not um, a significantly difficult exercise to replace a panel if we need to. Because it's modular. Yep. But it's, it's, st it's sturdy enough, like if I, not, not me, because I would never do such a thing, thing, but if somebody went and tried to stick their boot through it, is that, is, are they going to come off second best or is the... We would very much hope so. <laughs> that's that's it's because of that mode, like I said, the screen, obviously, yeah. I know, there'd be some and sort so of... The, yeah. yeah, so the design of the screen is actually done with multiple layers of plastic film over the top as well. So, again, for, for tagging or scratching, you know, there's the potential for a technician to come in and just yeah. pull off that. Second of my three questions, I feel like Councillor Dutta. Go on. But um, the... Um, my one thing, because like I said, it looks really good, it seems very narrow like if it's raining how many people are we expecting to be able to stand under that thing because normally you sort of see bus shelters and they're they're quite long and sort of three four people five people could sort of sit underneath them in a row whereas this sort of yeah. seems like maybe two people so this is the dimensions of a normal bus stop as i understand okay. it but it's designed to be able to accommodate two wheelchairs oh. so the seats can flip up to do that also the interesting thing about the design is in terms of the shelter so it's able to be moved around in relation to the direction of the sun or the rain. So the theory is um, it's actually much more able to accommodate um, people than your standard fixed bus shelter. How robust is the design? That is very so much why sorry. we're doing a proof of concept. <laughs> work. Um, so this design at this stage um, is intended to be one that can rotate quite significantly um, in part to deal with um, co-location with the rose garden, um, but that's very much something to be worked through in terms of a proof of concept. And lastly, and I'll, and I'll shut up, I promise, the mention of the 10 million, however much, however much it was, I should know that. 10.5. 10.5. Um, how, I suppose, if, you know, this, that's, that's broadly, as far as I understand, that's, that's a global Correct. amount of money. Correct. How much are we sort of expecting will be pitched in per ish? Yeah, so we haven't got to that yet um, with state growth. We're going through a process of identifying the kind of priority bus shelters within the city to do that work. Um, and then we'd look to have continuing discussions with state growth about what that will look like. As I said, it's likely to include a co-contribution requirement, so we'd need to have a look at our capacity yeah. to do that. But in the case of the less, the less that we claim that with the more money we get per, or is it sort of not that simple? Uh, well, yeah. at this stage, I think it's dollar for dollar matching. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you. Looks really great, and I'm pleased it's back in the old spot because mm -hmm. um, I know the casino were offering another little patch, but it looked a bit tricky. It was um, very tricky from yeah. an access perspective. Um, so that's all good. Um, I'm just wondering, I guess, about the project more generally, like um, in terms of the bus shelter design competition, the, has the, is this the end of the, the, once this is done, that was what the winners expected, just one, just one proof of concept, or I thought it was two. 
Well, my understanding is it's one, but okay. what we have also done as part of the prize is that we've negotiated a payment with them so that we own the design of that bus shelter. So um, we've paid them a fee to, for that intellectual property. So once we all settle on the proof of concept, it's ours to do with as we wish. And are you envisaging that we will outsource the manufacture of this somewhere or could we do this with our own Clary's Gates team? Oh, again, to be worked through in the proof of concept yeah. process. So we're working with a local manufacturer at the moment who's used to working with this material. Yeah. Um, probably there will be some specialised um, cutting material, but it may be that um, some of the, say, the timber panels can be made by the manufacturer, but they can be assembled by our team. Mm -hmm. But that's very much part of the investigations that we're going through and the desire would be to have as much manufactured by us as we can. Yeah, great. And so just, I guess, following up from Alderman Barakas's question, <coughs> the actual dimensions of the seat um, is more like, just in terms of if people ask about it, um, it is sort of more like a three metres, is it? Um, I can't remember the actual dimensions, but it, the requirement is to be, for Sophia to be able to park a wheelchair yeah. in the seat. So the, there's two seat panels there that will flip up out of the way and a wheelchair can be parked in there. So it's I'm happy to kind of give you the exact dimensions. I have them in, this, yeah. in about three point font on this piece of paper, um, but I can get them for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be great, just because um, I'm sure people would be interested and um, yeah, that looks good. Thank you. All right. Yeah, uh, thanks. I'm happy to um, see this get to this stage. I reckon it's really exciting to have a prototype mm. and hopefully it's successful because I, the objective was to be able to kind of mass produce these things with laser cutting and folding of metal mm. and hopefully they can roll out all over the place. And I think. I don't know, done down the figures, but it just feels like this would be cheaper <coughs> than those off the shelf kind of bus stops. We believe it will. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which look like rubbish mm. uh, compared to the opportunity to have a, a variation in every bus stop to meet the requirements at the bus stop, mm -hmm. which yep. is really quite exciting and revolutionary. Mm. Just but hang on. So, so I'm really hopeful that our uh, intellectual property helps us to roll it out. Um, and that we can maybe trade that in the future, yeah. you know, with other councils that are looking for solutions once we understand the process and all the... There's, all the, there's quite a bit of interest in the project, but um, as I said, we need to get through the proof of concept yeah, stage yeah. and um, then we can show people. Yep, excellent. Deputy? Yeah, sorry to interrupt before, but um, I, just, I just wonder, um, and maybe it's through to Mr Noy, but just um, because this is really looking at DDA compliance as as one of the main things, is there an opportunity for some sort of special provisions should we need to do planning approval? Special uh, provisions? Like, like so asking the state government in relation to, to special provisions. Yeah. Um, look, look I, I'd need to take that question on notice. I, I'd need to understand whether this does require... This is actually... Uh, uh, on it would appear on uh, federal's uh, prop property, so there is a, uh, a difference there. If it was a public infrastructure on public land, then it probably would be exempt. But because it's um, on federal uh, land, um, private entity, it might require planning approval. But I'll, I'll check that. But, mm. but I'm thinking of, of more more into the future. Because this, you know, if we're rolling them out across yeah. the city and beyond, yeah. um, maybe but it's something that the state government might consider as yeah. as a priority for access. Uh, look, I think, um, as I indicated, uh, if it was on public land, and most of these structures are in fact on public land, uh, they are normally exempt. Um, so I, I, I can come back to you uh, on, on that, but uh, I understand the question. Yeah. Um, you know, are there any regulatory impediments to getting these rolled out as quickly as possible? And if there are, can we, you know, uh, circumvent them in some way? Yes, so. thank you. Um, just to, can you make a note that it'd be great to invite the 
instigator of the petition, Mr. Rose, um, is her name? Um. So Rose Farrell, to, to be able to attend any launch in the future. Yep, yep. I think you did, didn't you? Oh, I'm happy to. Not. No further comments? Any objections? No? I'll declare that carried. Thanks. On to seven, item seven, committee action status report, 7.1. Moved by Honourable Brackus. Information be received. No, any comments? I have one. Can we tidy this up? It seems to be a lot on it. Are we working to um, eliminate some of these things or to yeah. get them off here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chair, our new manager, Mo City Mobility, will be making that a priority <laughs> to clean that yeah. through, formally introducing Caden McCarthy to uh, the committee. But um, it, it's about sequencing of work, yeah. and, and that's sort of the first priority that Caden and I have been working on together. Okay. I'm still scrolling here. Just. Um... <laughs> He was very happy to change Director of City Life. Which is the number of these. Yeah, <laughs> so we'll take time to resolve that. Yeah. Certainly. Okay. Mm. Go, go easy on us. She's just received them from okay. me. So. All right. <laughs> on that, that last one, motorbike reinstatement. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Very good. Received and noted. Any objections? Declare that carried by. Thanks, Alderman Brackers. Item eight's questions without notice. I do have one, Chair. Um, and I'll, I've got part of it I'll ask in the close as well. Um, just walking around yesterday and today around the CBD, um, talking to business owners, nearly every single one raised a, quite and quite sort of assertively raised an issue that they have with antisocial behaviour in the, in the CBD, sort of little gangs of, um, sort of teenagers holding people at knife points. Somebody sent me a video of somebody wielding a machete through um, Wellington Arcade. Um, and then just abuse of abuse of um, staff and customers and theft and I could, I could go on um, and to the point where business owners are saying to me that they don't feel safe. Um, can we? Can I just? Can we get a um, not a report, but can we just get some um, s uh, advice on what exactly council is doing at the moment um, and what we're already sort of looking at doing, just so we can figure out what the next you know, what the next step is. Because I think at, at the moment, you know, whatever we are currently doing, I think we need to do more or do different because it's not, it's not currently working. And I've got, I've got, some, I've got another particular question sure. in the close that I'd like to ask, but I'll, I'll leave that just because of the sensitivities of it. Can I actually just make a comment? Is that allowed? Uh, no, it's questions, no comments. You'd need to ask it as but a question. Can I answer the question? Uh, no, I think, the, well. Just because I might have some information that's useful. Well, the, Technically, there's no discussion on these questions. But I might have an answer to some of the questions. Yes, I know. This is a grey area. I'll, I will defer to any of you directors who might... Well, look, uh, uh, is, is the question directed at the officers or is it uh, directed at um, the, the committee? It's because directed it, at whoever can answer. I'd appreciate if you had some stuff okay, on Okay. Well, <laughs> under those so, circumstances... So look, I'd appreciate if you had some stuff on, like, provided yeah, in writing. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Not everyone. I'd appreciate if you had some stuff provided, but if the Lord Mayor is able to provide some guidance now, I'm happy to. I'm happy to okay, listen. There's no discussion. Sure, it's an answer. It's an answer. <coughs> so uh, you know, I'm really keen to hear the answer on sort of future or current activities. But um, this has been something that the council's been working on for a couple of years. Um, I mean, there is both the Waterfront Safety Committee, which is waterfront related, obviously, and then. I think in about 2020 there was a sort of CBD um, business safety um, working group convened um, when we had a former safety officer um, and that that was, um, we just played the convening role and the businesses themselves really led that uh, and that has been meeting quarterly I think but I think that it has gone down in terms of engagement. Um, the police did attend those meetings, a couple of them, uh, there was always a couple of officers at every meeting and there is this tension between the officers saying, you know, we can't, if we're on the beat all the time, um, you know, people get used to it and then they all go out to Claremont or they go to Rosny and they know that there's a particular group 
of individuals that are basically roaming around Greater Hobart. Um, and it's and there's some challenges with actually, um, I guess, um, prosecution and evidence, and you know, the, so there was a tension between the business who who really ultimately want police on the beach. They they were happy to have the security guard that we paid for at one stage, but ultimately they just want more police presence, and the police saying we don't have sufficient um, resources to literally be in Hobart all the time. So. You know, and there's talk, been talk about it having a police person in our, you know, info box and lots of discussion. But it is ultimately, it seems as though it's it is much more about active policing on the ground. And we did meet with the police minister. Um, so there's there's certainly been a lot of effort, but it's one of those challenges, and it does seem it comes in waves. So when the group they have a bit of time in. The CBD, and then they decide they get a bit of pressure, and then they go and they spend time with the Rosny bus mall, and then they're in the and it, there's some similar characters that the police know who they are. So um, it's challenging, um, but there's certainly been quite a lot of activity. But it doesn't mean there can't be new um, ideas. I mean, and the businesses came up with some great ideas in Wellington Court. They were suggesting that we play classical music, for example. That there was some evidence. Someone said that that. You know, when you play music, and when there was, but we were paying for buskers, that it was leading to a different sort of. But we can't pay for buskers to be there 24 hours a day, obviously. So, but yeah, I think there's been some really the business community when they were meeting, were in appreciating the opportunity to connect with each other and share ideas about it. But it's not a, it's not simple. And the other thing that's really important to note is that we have had a much more significant rollout of CCTV cameras as a result of a federal government grant, actually. Um, and maybe the response can detail how many cameras we've got. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's your answer for that, and then we'll get a number. But more. Of... Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. written stuff would be good. Okay. I'd like to talk about it, but I won't. Okay. Anyone else got a question? <laughs> Deputy I've got Burnett. A couple of questions, um, and I've got them written down, so you know it's a little bit easier for you, Sarah. Um, so, firstly, uh, the Grattan Institute released a report earlier this week, which focused on the harmful transport emissions in Australia's major cities two of Australia's largest cities, Melbourne and Sydney. Um, I've got a copy of the report and it notes that the hidden health impacts of cardiovascular disease, including heart attack and stroke, pulmonary conditions such as asthma, have a huge financial and economic burden on Australia. It also says that transport accounts for 3% of Australia's greenhouse gas emissions um, and it suggests the phasing in of low emissions transport. Whilst there appears to be no data on Hobart in this report, can the director, the relevant director, please provide advice on the impacts of diesel and petrol fumes and the overall greenhouse gas emissions burden and any health data related to particulates from transport emissions? Uh, would there be similar be benefits if Hobart were to phase out old trucks, especially you know, old um, trucks or, you know, um, that's... Old sort of, diesel. Yeah, especially with the possibility of old vehicles um, de delivering Tasmania's or Hobart's freight. Uh, subsequent question, are we e-vehicle ready? Could the director please provide information as the, to the use and subsequent benefit, benefit that we're seeing um, at the Dunn Street e-vehicle charging place. On Monday, this keeps going, on Monday evening the council gave planning approval for e-vehicle charging functions as part of, as part of the Lafroy Street uh, park, uh, car park extension. What other e-vehicle fast charging facilities are being considered? That's, that's the first question, first part of the first question. Um, uh, so do you want to take that on notice? <laughs> it's very detailed. Um, and the second one um, is around the the deaths on, on roads that we're experiencing at the moment. So sadly, the number of road deaths this year in Tasmania has already um, reached 39. It's passing last year's total deaths of 35 uh, across Tasmania. The impact on motor vehicle accidents is far-reaching across Tas many Tasmanian communities. Can't get away from it. Similarly, the US road toll figures have been reported as skyrocketing um, over the last um, few years, as reported in an article, which I have. 
Um, the article it also explains that the city of Hoboken in New Jersey has achieved zero road deaths in four years by introducing, among other things, some very simple traffic devices. Um, and you might know of this. Uh, so what is council doing to reduce motor vehicle accidents? Would more separated bike lanes, including for e-scooter use, be part of that solution, especially to help vulnerable road users? And would a vision zero plan for a city such as uh, that set by Hoboken in New, Z in New Jersey be suitable and possible for Hobart? Yep, I would have had that on maybe. <laughs> I think that's a shared director view. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Very detailed, but you know, and I've got all the links to the article, so I'll send them to all of you if you like. And I do have questions too, sorry, because I think this is the last meeting we've asked <laughs> questions. <laughs> no, 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 okay. Okay. Ah. Um, so um, first question is um, what was that? Uh, Oh, um, do we ever um, do we have an, do we ever undertake an audit of missing street signs? Um, uh, you know, do we have a sense about because people sometimes say that there seems to be missing street signs and not enough street signs. Um, do we ever do we do that regularly? Do we sort of check whether something's fallen down and never been replaced, or do we? Look, I'm, my understanding is that those matters are, do get reported. Um, but, uh, yeah. They do get reported, obviously. But we depend on a report on them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't have thought that we would be doing a uh, an audit of those licences, but we um, we can take that one on notice okay. and get a response. Thank you. Um, have you got many? I'm just planning ahead. Have, have you? Yeah, got? I've got a couple. Okay. Um, there was a decision in, um, sorry, I might have to get this one out. Um, there was, um, oh, can we get an update on the utilisation of, um, uh, can we get uh, an update of data for the last 12 months on utilisation of all um, North Hobart car parks that have a sensor? So, you know, like we've got obviously the street, the side streets, the Condell Place, the Lefroy. Um, so I know that's not everything, but that one. Um, and then the other one was around an old decision of the council. Um, so in 2000 and uh, a decision of the council in 20th of um, September 2017, the council resolved to um, write to the transport commissioner to request, uh, basically the Transport Commissioner be requested to consider a 40 kilometre an hour speed limit for Hill Street between Mole and Arthur Street. And that was following the implementation of the project that was undertaken in um, Hill Street. So, the, you know, about 2018, we did those median strips and the various other bits and pieces. Um, and it was basically, there was a decision that once that was done that the Transport Commissioner be requested to consider a 40 kilometre hour an hour speed limit. So the question is, did we, did we do that? Did we make that request? Yep. Uh, and I think that, I've got another really long one, but I, I think I'll save that because otherwise it'll be, you'll be writing questions for the next three months, so. Yeah, she might not be here to hear the answer. True. <laughs> I'll ask it as a public question. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done with questions? Okay, all right. Uh, would someone like to move? We closed. We closed the open. Okay, thanks, Alderman Marakis.